Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera. I want to do a little jig because my baby looks so good. I want to thank you all for coming back. I appreciate it. Uh, we are on air. Um, we got one side of the window, uh, one side of the windows ground and shaped. And uh, basically that's what the, the two inch flat stock was put on there for to get my shape. And I'm, I'm really happy with the shape of it. Um, you can see it nicely with the metal ground all the way around it. Um, that took some time, but we got it done. Uh, but I, I'm really liking the shape. It's giving it a nice look. Uh, we have, what do we have? We have, I told you yesterday or the day before, the wheel wells are all ground up and that sort of stuff. We're cooking with gas. If we want to come over to the other side, if we want to come over to the other side and take a look, if you want to come over to this side and take a look, baby, you can see the windows from the back side, how nice that looks compared to the squared off side. If she wants to focus in on that, you can see how there's a, there's a big difference. That, that side over here where it's all rounded off in the corners, um, I think it looks fan fantastic it really does uh, we haven't got no windows we got a place to put the windows now because we have that lip going in there um, that's really good we if you have not been following on this build there's still a lot left to do to this build and uh, we have to build a hatch door to get into this truck um, and I'm thinking the hatch door is going to be here so there's going to be like a hatch door that lifts up and you're going to get in here and climb in um, there has to be a hatch door made for the engine to come in and out. That has to be done. Um, the whole side has to be sheathed, that's for sure. Man, the weather's been hot and muggy here in Nova Scotia. Wow. When I come out here during the day, it gets so hot sometimes that sometimes a fuller doesn't smell that good. And uh, what I like to do is I like to use this native. Uh, it goes on dry and it keeps me smelling good for 72 hours. 72 hours. 70, that's a long time, is it not? Yeah, that is a long time. And, uh, and I'll tell you, when I go in the house, even Jolene says so. Like, what's that smell? And it does. It smells really, really good. And I don't know if Nathan's noticed or not, but um, I, I generally don't stink, do I, Nate? I've noticed a pretty fresty smell around lately. Awesome, you know, awesome. More or something. When you're working in a small shop like this, um, nobody wants to be enclosed with um, a different smell that no one enjoys. I have a vanilla sandalwood, I have a sandalwood and shea butter, and a coconut vanilla. Um, if, if you think you would like to try this product, um, Jolene will write it in the description on this video. And uh, if you go there and you want to use the code BADCHAD, you can get 20% off this stuff. It's made out of simple, clean products. It goes on dry. It's probably the best deodorant that you'll use. Um, and the reason being is, it's your woman will be all over you. Or, she'll take it and use it herself. Check it out, try it out, smell good. Alrighty, let's get to work. Let's do it. Um, we, have, we have the bumper over here. I want to do a visual for you. That's what I like doing for the, for the show, is I like to have visuals. It's, you know, if you don't get a visual, then it's hard to, hard to keep watching, you know, if I don't do something or get something done. So we're going to put the bumper face on. And we'll do a couple other things that I can come up with real quick. That's what we're going to do. With, yeah, let's put the bumper face on. I got a piece of metal here that's already, that's already been cut. We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. It's a little bit long. Uh, generally, if you're going to make something, you want to make your pattern a little bit long, a little bit big. And the reason being is, um, just like the windows, if you have a little bit of material to work with, then you can perform something. If it's shy, then it's hard to perform something that you're trying to make. I have a shape right up here um, that I want to get. First off, it's kind of on a lean and I want to put it on the end of that. So what I'm going to do is, you, you probably have guessed, I'm going to go to a piece of cardboard. You've probably guessed. We'll get a piece of cardboard going here. Marker in my pocket. It's a beautiful day, hot, muggy day in Nova Scotia. Wow. Not as beautiful as my Queen Jolene, though. Alrighty. I'm thinking that this is a factory edge. And I like to go with a factory edge because um, it's straight. Now, I'm going to go down here. That's going to give me my line. It always helps to have dirty fingers. <laughs> I guess uh, 
I have to ask Je Jolene if it's good to have dirty fingers. Generally, she's saying, don't you touch me, you're dirty. <laughs> but I generally touch her anyways. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I really do appreciate it. And the reason being is, is I'm a lucky man um, to be able to... Not just to be able to do this, but jo I have Jolene in my life. But I'm a lucky man to be able to come out here and work every day on something that I enjoy. And uh, that's what I consider to be a lucky man. And um, I want to thank you all for, you know, helping me go through this process. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't be able to do this every day. And uh, I appreciate it. I'm thinking that that's my my shape right there that I want. I could weld that piece down along that grill really nice there. That'll be fine. It would be hard to find that angle if I did not do what I was doing. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna apply that in there. Pretty simple process right there, was it not? To find that angle. Simple. So simple that anybody can do that. Anybody. Anybody? Yes, anybody. So we're gonna cut that off there. And we should know, or I'm hoping, that that will fit that, which we think it, I think it will. I'm going to have to get a couple C-clamps. I've got C-clamps everywhere. They're, good, they're a good tool to have. I like the ones with the, the, the swivels on the ends. Uh, the other ones that got the, like this, I like them too. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not interested in knocking anything, but sometimes I find they'll put a dimple or a dent in something if you're not careful. And it's very easy to do when you're doing stuff like this. All right, I'm going to cut that. Put my glasses on. Wasn't quite ready. Oh, got glasses on my head. Glasses on my head. I'm going to show you something before I cut that off, just real quickly. Actually, I'll, show you. I'll cut it off and then show you. Got my glove on backwards. Just because I got a little tiny bit of a grinder disc. Got a small grinder disc here. Just a small one. Here's just a little thing that I do. This is the thing I do, like, I always talk about when you butt weld something or when you grind the weld off, I like, if we want to come over this side, I like when the weld is just ground, you just grind the weld, I like that. We're not hitting this, we're not hitting that. And I feel like that's, that's the way it should be done. It should be, because if you're taking away from this and taking away from that, you're, you're taking away product that's not necessary. You have nothing against it. It's, it's good metal, don't take away from it. But when you get so far, then you want to feather that down to get to that, to make it look like this. Um, this is a hard, we're just going, we've been going over that with a hard disc there on an angle. And then it comes to a point that you want to get a little bit closer. And I've been using a little, I've been using the flapper wheels to, to flatten it off. And it needs to be prepped for filler or primer or whatever it needs to be scratched up, but that's what it's getting prepped for. Um, sometimes, the metal is not perfectly, so you can grind it all off. And I'm not willing to go further than I have to to make it look a certain way. You know what I mean? T to me, um, to destroy something because you're not happy that it's not matched up just perfect is foolish when it all has to be filled out. You can see along here that this metal is a little bit higher than the plate because when I hold the grinder flat, it leaves a little bit of edge going along there. And you, I can keep grinding, and yes, I can. I can keep grinding it until it looks like it's not there, but I'm not going for that. And the reason being is I'm not interested in taking away any metal away from this. I can get this to look a little bit better, and I can show you how I can do it. And, uh, but what I've been doing, or what I do do sometimes, the, say if this is ground up in here, it's all ground in there, you can see how nice it looks there, right? I, I've been taking, I take my small, flapper my small zip cuts that generally you know you usually take off your grinder because they're too small or they're you're hitting your side of your grinder before you're hitting your blade or something but i keep them around for doing that sort of stuff for feathering that stuff off and i find with the small one i'll able to use it on the side i'm just going to do a little bit and show you exactly what i mean i'll take that 
and feather that weld off to that square stock. And then I can make that look really nice. So that look nice. When someone comes in there, you've got that all welded together. Got that ground off. Really looks good. I'm grinding on the square stock a little bit, but what I'm using that flapper wheel for, or not flapper wheel, zip cut wheel for, is just to make it a little bit finer. Where I have, where I have this laying up like this, it's all welded along there solid, no pinholes or anything like that. But you can see there's a little tiny ledge because I've been trying to hold my grinder as flat as possible and not dig into a certain thing. And I can take my zip, zip wheel and do this. All I'm doing is just feathering that edge, this the top edge of the weld, I'm feathering it off with the zip cut. Just feathering it off. You can see how that peanut bark, you can see how that looks a little better. It cleans it up a little better. We're still on the weld. We're not down on this sheet of metal. And it just feathers it off and cleans it up a little, just a little bit more. Just a little trick. So if you want your welds to look a little bit better, the small zip cut, just give it a little flat. Also, in areas like this, you would never want to come in there with a great big hard disc. I, do, I would do this with a zip cut and a grinder. And you can really, um, what can I say? You really can do a really nice job without hitting that or that. Now, if you get doing this, Fina's got someone in her, in her, in her sights. If you get doing this, you are gonna have a problem because you're gonna dig into that, you're gonna dig into that, you're gonna gouge this and gouge that both. Uh, with that zip cut, you really can be really, um, what's that called, accurate. So I'm generally not nervous of the blade breaking either because it's only that big, right? I'm generally not nervous of that. So I will take that zip cut and go along there and do a really nice job. It grinds it off nice, it gets it in there nice and you can be accurate. Let's put the bumper on. Enough of the yak and let's get to work. Alrighty, I'm thinking that I'll put the top on so the top fits nice and then I can buff off the bottom because it's on the bottom I can buff the bottom off um, I can buff the bottom off nope gonna put this on first do this first so the people that are just beginning to watch come aboard uh, this truck never existed we are building it from a junked chassis that probably um, no one would ever think to build something out of um, it would probably go to the junkyard and everybody else's mind but in my brain i see a project and uh, if you want to go from the back from the beginning um, to what's going on now 
something from nothing, hey, it's okay. Something from nothing. Um, I think I want to push that up in there. Squeeze that down a little bit. Make that tight and right. I'd like to get it, get it on the edge so when I weld it, I can grind it off nice. Uh, we're not all the way forward. I'm gonna actually zip cut that a little bit. What? Oh, wow. Mr. Shepard. So, around there, he's going to be the live studio audience today, is he? Huh? Look, he's even got his hilt shirt on. This man has got more material in the, in the truck than most. All the grinder discs I got from Mr. Shepard, and I got uh, the screws for the trailer, and now he's even bringing down door hinges. Awesome. Have a seat, my friend. Have a seat. Have a seat. Well, actually, here, why don't you come to hold this in? Huh? Yeah. Cool. Sure <laughs> done. Uh, Doug got the day off early. Um, just come, just come my way just a little bit, please and thank you. Uh, Doug got the day off early, and uh, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I'll just put one more on. It's not pre-fit. It's, it's. I have to make it fit. Yes, that right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. You couldn't buy it? No, I didn't buy it, no. <laughs> yeah, we've been using them grinder just, just like candy on this bad boy. There's been oh, a lot of grinding, man. Yeah. I could have bought it more now, actually. I didn't know. No, that's fine. That's fine. You're good. I think Boston myself, then. You might use someday. Cool. Excellent. Do you like Thank the bigger ones? Or the bigger it, ones it, it doesn't. It doesn't okay, matter. I'm, I'm not. I'm not prejudiced in any way. <laughs> nope. Oh, that's good. It's coming slowly, every bit, every little tiny bit, yeah, right? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I'm happy with that. Having a hard time with that. Try to head in there one, once. First time is clamps. First, I missed a bad the mad chan shot. I've never, seen, I've never seen that one yet. The mad chan? The mad chan. The mad chan. Oh, he's mad. He's fitting them boxes on the top. Oh, them things. Oh, man, that was. To try to fit a box, make a box, and make a box go inside of it with metal, like any little edge that it catches up on. That's great, thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. No, fantastic. No, it's fantastic. I'm gonna get another clamp or two. Um, fantastic. They probably might fall, but it is what it is. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it, it, right now it's up on jack stands and um, it's going down on the ground another, what do you say, five inches? Five inches down, so it's really gonna be a, quite a low machine, low and wide, like it's, um, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be one of those vehicles that you probably would never ever roll. <laughs> You'd never roll that, like it's so wide compared to how low it's gonna be. Yeah. Not that I wanna roll it, but. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, should I go to, yeah, I probably should do that. I'm going to mark that now. I want to take it back and take a look at it. That's cool. Now, if you take, if you're taking a look at this, as I'm putting this bumper on, can you see any bad Chad flexible comb going anywhere? Because I can. Because I can. I'm just going to make a mark right there, just so I know where to cut it off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it before I 
back that far and then it won't take off on me. I'm gonna turn on the welder. So a, a pretty easy thing to do was to make the shape of that angle with a piece of paper before I did before I did the metal. If I tried to cut the metal and then make the shape, or try to make the shape, cut the metal to make the shape and, and hold it up there and mark it, I don't think it would have been as easy. It might have been maybe, but I feel like that's the way to do it. What I just showed you is make a little pattern, make your angle with the, the paper, lay it on your metal, and then go for it. So, Mr. Shepard has brought me some hinges. Wow, all kinds of hinges, wow. So I'll probably use them on the doors of the toolboxes. Nice, nice. Maybe I'll take the doors off the house and put them on. <laughs> and I see he supports Hilt's gear. Thank you very much, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. So I wasn't lying when people buy gear. See, I wasn't lying. And if you know anything about me, I generally don't. <laughs> That's not one thing I do. Because I, could, I couldn't remember a lie if I told you one. That's not what I want to do there. <clears throat> you can see how it's this, this square stock's got the little round edge coming down. It's a nice place to put the bead of weld to roll that on there. It's a nice place to put the weld. And the reason being is there's a spot for it. So I want to take the weld right to the top of the square stock and down, down onto the metal. And the reason being is because it'll be full, there'll be enough product there. So when I grind it off, it'll look good. Ouch. Got knees of steel, boys, knees of steel. I'm hoping that's staying good, yeah. Are you playing on your Camaro yet? Uh, I sold it. <laughs> Did you make? No. I bought another car, so... Oh, wow. Yeah. You're having fun, then. Yeah. I bought a newer car. I don't get it, so there's two years of work. And I thought, all right. You're not going for it, right? I already got two cars I'm building now. Okay. You didn't need a third. I didn't need a third. Okay. Well, you could be like me, have 15. <laughs> I ended up bought another one last week again, another project. Okay. But I bought a 2010 Challenger. Oh, wow. Something I could get in dry. Yeah. Hemi? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Happy with it? Oh, yeah, I love it. Well, that's the main thing, man. Big and comfortable. Well, 2010? Man, time's flying because you wouldn't you wouldn't think Challenger was made back in 2010. I think you started at nine or okay. You never, so you still look the same as yeah. 2023. What color? Orange. I was thinking orange. Bright orange. Yeah. Black, black hood, stupid, uh, can't go can't go wrong there. I don't think. Can't go wrong. And you, did you have a buyer for your Camaro before you did that, or no. you, you sold it after fact? There you go. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. I'm going to cut that piece off right now. I like that, it looks good. And it's a simple trick, piece of square stock, piece of square stock, cap it, good to go. Uh, da, 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 da. Do not feel like I have to, uh, the square stock underneath it, it was tack, tack, tacked every inch. I do not feel like that has to be welded solid because there's nothing getting down here once I weld this all on. So we're good there. Or I feel that we're good. 
Gonna cut this line here. Sort of a hard thing to do, cut from the front, watch the line in the back. Not my favorite thing. Keep rocking, everything's going good. Keep on rocking. If you were watching and following along um, earlier, if you remember, there was a great big gap in between this two inch flat stock and that sheet metal. And I made sure that I welded all the way across. Now, as you can see where, where the weld was to where it needed to be welded, from there all the way there. But if I did not weld it all shut, I couldn't grind it off to make it look like there was nothing there. So if I wanted to grind it more, I could make it look like there was nothing there. But if you must understand, if I just weld this side, and while the, the flat stock down, there would have been a gap in the middle that I could not have ground because I would not have been able to gut to it. The exact same thing with this. If I spot weld down here, keep my spot weld down there, well then I can't grind it off nice. If I bring my spot weld from here all the way to the square stock, then I can grind it off so you can't tell where I welded it on. And uh, that sometimes is the difference between making it look real good and making it look okay. Um, you can make it look real good if you want to take the weld and put it where you need to grind it because I'm down there ways I could do this and you're, you won't be up to the top that that won't be full but what I'm saying you want to fill it from there to there just like that so you can grind it off at the top and the edge and that way there you can make it look like it's never been welded if you want to just a little trick that you must need to know and if you don't care, neither do I. Like I always say, take what you like and throw away the rest. See, I'm down here a little bit. Can you see that? I'm down there a little bit. Would, I would never just start welding down where it's at. I gotta fill it, so I wanna grind it all off. So I would start at the top and bring it all the way down to where it looks good. So I've got product to weld it. Um, I'm kind of wondering if I should. I probably should go in front of that because I'm overlapping on the top of that. Do you think so? I think you're right, Jolene. I think he's right. Let's take this, bring this over here. Stay. Hope I can get it cut right because if I don't, well, I'll have to get the coat hanger right. Gonna make a marker with it. I'm thinking that'll work. Cut that off and, and then we'll butt it up to this piece instead of coming over top of it. I think that probably look nicer. Sure it will. I get a little bit of a gap going on, but you know what happens there. It's called penetration and a, and a coat hanger. Flatten it out. Gotta grind that off nice, never notice it. Now I'm gonna come along the bottom. And uh, on the bottom, I thought that I would probably 
weld it completely shut. But this is, this is my plan, or this is my thought. Where I have it welded like this, all the way around, nice. I don't feel like I'm gonna need this weld, this piece up here weld solid all along there. I don't feel like I need that. I'll probably end up cleaning that and fiberglassing it probably. I'm gonna spot weld it a few more times. Like I'll spot weld it good. I might need spot weld it in between that one maybe a couple more times. But I do not feel like I need to weld that solid all on the top where I have that all welded down there. Um, nothing would be able to get inside of that. Generally we want everything welded up solid. I'm thinking that the underneath of it would be good enough. It takes away the, the, the thought of warping any metal up top here, not welding that solid. It's fine, that's good, I'll just stick that on there for now. So on the bottom where I've got this piece of flat stock or this piece of sheet metal here, where I've got it on the bottom, I've got a piece of, if you picture it, I've got a piece of uh, one inch square stock here. I've got a piece of sheet of metal down in between it. And then I got a piece of three quarter inch square stock in front of it. And then it's all well together. So basically what I'm thinking is on the bottom of a car, on the sills of a car, if you looked on the sills of the bottom of the car, it'd be Spot, 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 all the way along the bottom where the inside sill comes down, the outside sill comes down, meets it, got a little lip there. They spot weld it all together. Why can't I just come along here and spot weld my two pieces of square stock with the sheet of metal in between and, and spot that together? And that should be fine. Nothing should be going up in there. Nothing should be able to get in there if I'm going to clean this up and, and glass this along here. I'll probably weld uh, the bumper on solid, but I probably will do the exact same thing with the square stock on the top here, uh, I probably might just glass it, I'm not sure, after I spot it up some more and make it look a little better. But that's where I'm at with that. I'm gonna take and cut the bottom of it off. I've got a little excess down the bottom. That fit nicely. That fit nicely. Yeah, I've already got that spot welded down there. That looks good. That looks fantastic. Hmm, it does. I'm going to leave that like that. You can see where I got it all spot welded there together now. Uh, it would take a quite a mighty hard hit. If I hit that with a mall hammer, you'd be lucky to bend it. And if I took a new car nowadays and took a mall hammer to their bumper, you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to get a piece of Tim Hortons cardboard back here. Lay on. in the back. Uh, the back got ground. Um, basically I did the exact same thing. Uh, we took a hard disk, took off the weld, uh, took a flapper wheel and just want to make sure this is all hard up. And it is. Not sure. If you spot weld the way I do, I try to like to keep them, keep them gap the, the same, the best I can. And the reason being, like always, it just looks better. It just looks better. And, th and that's my belly button, it's just my opinion. opinion I think it makes sense though
I'm getting a bit long over here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zip cut and cut that off. And the reason being is uh, once I get it up in there and then I go to shave it off or make it look nice, what happens is I end up cutting the spot weld off. So I might as well cut the metal off at the bottom. It's hanging down just a little bit. I may as well cut that off a little bit and then spot weld. Then I can grind it off so it's penetrated. These, these ones here are right on the money. So I just grind the little head of the spot weld off. I know I still got it welded because you can see it way up here. Now, these ones here, you can see where the metal's burning, and I've got a little bit of a spot. If I grind the metal off where it's overhung, I might not have connection. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knock that off for a second. Jolene, excuse me, looks amazing today as always. Always. So the other side, we'll go through this a little bit here in a, in a bit. We'll go through what, what still has to be done. I think I've talked about it somewhat. We'll go through it. Just going to lay here. So cut that off so it looks good. I'd like to get up off the ground and do it. I would be nice, but I'll just hold my zip cut flat. And it would be nice if I could get it all the way around. I know where it starts. It's right there. this blade jammed in there quite a ways because if I don't it can run up in front of the of the square stock underneath I want to keep this blade underneath so it runs along with the the square stock underneath and then I get a cut a true cut in the front Me feel better about the situation so now when I weld it I'll be able to grind the head of the weld off and be happy because I know I have penetration on enough of the metal uh, everything's fitting tight and right I'm just gonna zap it on keep my spot weld the same distance apart lovey-dovey all the time oh I don't like when that happens All it is is the tip's dirty and it burns off on the inside of the tip. You can see how it burned off on the inside of the tip. And then uh, you gotta pull the tip off and cut it off. Start over. You can see all the metal inside there. It really can. Ah. Bent it. Not a good start. Nope. That's about the distance away. Nice distance away to start something. Right about like that. Yeah, a little bit long, I suppose. 
it like that, it's nice. Put the wire right where you need to weld it. Boom, pull the trigger. Hold on for one, two, let off. And then put the wire. So if I was gonna weld this up, just for anybody who wants to know, I pull the trigger, this is what I do. I put the wire right where I need it. I want the wire on the square stock in between there to weld that together. So I'm gonna put the wire right there, I know where I need it. I can just close my eyes. One, two. And then when I go to do it again, this is, this is so anybody can weld, anybody. I don't care who it is, anybody can weld. So I put the wire where I need it, hold exactly where I need it, same distance, don't move it, close your eyes. I'm just gonna do it, close your eyes. Got my spotter weld. Now, if I'm gonna continue on, I wanna do another one, or I wanna continue on welding, and I wanna weld this whole bumper all the way across here. If you wanna come over here, when I do the next one, I put the wire right in the hole, there's a bead right here. Put the hole in the next one. I know the distance I'm away. It's right where I want it. Close my eyes. There's my next one. You can see how half of that little spot of weld laid over half of that one. What I would do again, got the same distance because I held it the same distance. It burned off the same distance. I did not move it. I did not do anything other than pull the trigger. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back in that little hole, right on the hole there where the last one was. Pull the trigger. Not pulling the welder in, not pushing it out, not doing anything, I'm just pulling the trigger. Now I've got three daubs of weld there. Half of this one is over top of half of that one. And the reason being is you want no pinholes in anything or anything to come through to bust anything off or anything like that. You do not want that. If you want to come over and take a look at this here. When you're welding something like that, that's one spot at a time. And every one is overlapped the other one so there's nothing in between that can cause an issue. <clears throat> so as I have three there, you know what happens? You count to four and do another one. So basically I stick it in the same hole where I started before. Do not pull it away, do not push in, do not do anything. So now I've got four beads of weld there, four spots of weld there. <clears throat> I'm on my way to welding that thing nice. So basically, if you're looking to weld something, find your distance, put it right where you want the speed to weld at, pull the trigger, one, two, pull it away. Find that, that spot, right on your spot weld, go back in and do it again. And every, cover every one just like that. And uh, take your time, try to make sure that the heat is under control, have the air hose with you, blow it off if it's, if it's getting too hot, and uh, you can do a fine job. Believe me, you can. And you won't even have to buy a mask because you can close your eyes. Um, let's face it, it's not a good idea to, to weld with just closing your eyes, but what I'm saying is, that's how simple it is. You can weld blindfolded, or not blindfolded, but you can weld without a helmet just by closing your eyes because you're keeping the welder exact same distance, exact same spot. You're, all you're doing is pulling the trigger. Close your eyes before you pull the trigger. Open your eyes after you let the trigger go. You should be good. Just like that. Beautiful. You are joy. Beautiful. So we have that all tacked on there. I want to take a look at it. Where it come up here, I think it was the best idea to do what Joanie said, cut her back a little bit, flush it off of that. We can grind that off nice. You'd never even know it was done. Woo! So basically, if we haven't got the grill in it yet, but basically this, well, no, it's not basically this side because I have them hinges to use for this side to make the doors for these pieces here. Let's pull this out. I'm gonna pull one of these out. It's gonna be a little bit of an issue getting it out because it's a little bit of an issue getting it in. So it is what it is. But I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do before I weld those in. I don't think you need to know or see me weld those in. I think that you would know how I'm gonna weld them in. And if you don't, um, just keep watching. Ah, there's an issue. That fell. Now my metal's up in here. Ah, that's nice. Like I said, might be a little bit of an issue. Hey, 
got her. Oh, not yet. There we go. I got a trick for next time. You can see right there on this side where I spot welded it and the metal was a little bit long. See how they end up being cut off? So you have to be careful. I'm gonna to have to make sure that, see these ones been cut off. I'm gonna to have to make sure this is tight and right. When I shove this in, I wanna be able to weld that seam and the reason that's why I do that, I want to weld this seam of this with this seam to make it all one. One spot at a time. If we take a look at, I think I ground it probably. You still can see on the top how it's one, basically one dot at a time. You could weld that. Okay. You can see on the inside how it's one dot at a time. You know? That's how we roll. We're just like the grandmother that knits a sweater. One hole at a time. So this is what I'm gonna do in here. This is what I got. I gotta get this done before I weld these in here. I have a piece where I put, um, I should get a little bit of welding to do, I see, before I start doing that. If you wanna come over here and take a look. I've got a little bit of welding up here that I wanna do. See that? A little bit of welding there I wanna do inside before I do that. Um, I got a little, a few little things I want to close that off. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. I'll just get it. I got a can of Rock Guard. I think I do. I thought I did. Yeah, I do. Just want to see if I got a park can. This stuff is not good generally to keep part cans because what happens is uh, it'll dry uh, in the can or the nozzle and get hard and then, then you ruin a half a can of uh, rocker guard. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do it all right this present moment, but I'm going to spray some on there so you know what I'm going to do. So what's going on is the toolboxes go in here, flush up to the farthest part out of this opening. That's the farthest, part, that's the farthest I can get that in there. That's where the back is going to be bolted to. There's going to be a gap in there that far in between that toolbox. <clears throat> It'll have to be dealt with from here to spray in here to get this looking good and from underneath here up in there to get good, you know, to undercoat or do anything to make it not go anywhere. But I'll just spray a little bit on because if I start spraying this stuff on and I get it over there where I'm welding, it's going to catch a fire. And that's why undercoatings generally last, but I'm not going to be able to get to that once that back's on there. So I, I just want to spray a little bit on it, just to show you what's what's going on. Just going to spray a little bit there. So I got a seam there. Not going to spray up there because I'll catch it on fire. This stuff generally hold it a foot away. I'm thinking that this is the same product that Seam Sealer is made out of. I'm thinking it is. It's just that it's sprayable. It's thinner. Now, I'm going to spray that like that. I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to come and put some seam sealer in there. There's a gap. See that gap in there? We'll put some seam sealer in that gap there. And then we'll let that dry. So it's probably a half hour for each. Half hour for this. Half hour for the seam sealer. And then I will do this again. So there's, there's an hour and a half just to spray it. Seam seal it. Spray it again. Let it dry before I put that in. I probably will be doing the back sides of this before I put it in. I'm not going to the, to the um, issue of priming and painting and epoxy, you know, not doing all that. Um, this truck pr never will be driven in the winter, no doubt in my mind, it will never be there. Um, if it is, it's just because it's being moved somewhere. But in actual fact, I'll just clean that all off, 
probably take a little piece of sandpaper and make it stick good. This is all galvanized here, so that would never go anywhere. So it never went anywhere before. But this is the brand new steel up there, so you want to get something on it. And the square stock, we'll black that all out. Uh, and then I'll black this the back part out. We'll get it stuck in there. I cannot, I can only black it out so far because if I get too much on it, it's going to catch a fire. Um, that's what can happen, uh, and I do not want a fire. So I have to do both holes before I get them shoved in. We'll get them welded all the way around the outside. Uh, John, John Shepard, isn't it? It's John's first name, I think, sir. He bring me the hinges. Um, I'll probably use them hinges. I know it in my mind. Use them hinges to make some doors. I'll show you how I'm going to make the doors. Uh, I have another idea for the next time I'm going to do the next time. I'm not going to have the hard time putting it in and out. I don't think. I'm going to try not to. Um, Alrighty, so on this truck, it's starting from nothing, from a piece of junk, um, to making something. No plans, um, no measurements, just by eye. And you can do the exact same thing as I'm making it, whether I like it or not. You know, I just go by that, whether I like it or not. Um, what can I say? Everything is basically as you go. We have a few things that we've done off camera. And uh, the reason being is Jolene's had things to do. Um, we keep working. Nathan helped me yesterday. Gas tank. It's in the back. Um, a brand new uh, fuel cell. I'm going to use or hopefully use one of the guys that sent me this. A fan sent me this thing. It's pretty cool. And I figured that we should, we should use it. It's pretty cool. That's what I'm thinking. It's a gas cover door. And hopefully we can get that on the back of this bad boy. Um, when I was talking, when I was talking to Nathan about the fuel cell, um, I was wondering if it's okay to have the fuel cell higher than the engine on the just something that we were talking about, and I and I took it on the fuel injected engine. Um, I I think he said he feels like it will be okay, but if you had a fuel cell above like that and you had a carbureted engine. You, you want to be careful because if your needle valve sticks open on your carburetor, your gas would drain and, and fill your engine full of fuel. That made sense to me. Um, I think it happened to us a couple times on the lawn tractor. Um, what happens is if the needle valve sticks full on your, or sticks on your carburetor, your gas will keep running and fill your engine full of fuel. That's not good. Um, that's not good. But where it's a fuel injected engine and we're going to have a, an electric fuel pump, I'm thinking that we're going to be fine. Also, uh, I feel like it's a nice place up and out of the way. It has a tank on the back, but it, I just feel like it's probably full of water and rust and all that stuff because it's been outdoors so long. Um, the radiator is in place. This radiator was dropped off at the front of the house. Um, it was a return on Amazon or something like that. And um, this, what's his name? Dean Tupper, I uh, used to work with him at the chicken plant. He's, he's part of this, I don't know, return of Amazon, I think. And he dropped off all these parts and we're using the radiator. Uh, to me, it looks a bit thin, but there's on, the, on these um, trucks and cars with this engine in it, I think it had a water tank on the side where you uh, load your water. So there would be more water in that tank and then just in the radiator. So we're, we're sitting good there, I think. If not, we would just change it. But we've got the mounts. You can see the mounts where they're hooked up down the bottom. It's all mounted. Um, this piece here is just sitting here right now. Uh, on the top, we've got some rubber mounts there. We just kind of got it screwed in there. It probably will go down on the floor and be screwed on or mounted on. The brackets on the, on the, ga on the fuel cell, um, I welded a, a bolt to each piece of square stock front and back. So the strap just goes down. I ratchet on the back. And then I ratchet it on the front, which holds the fuel cell down. All the brake lines are run. The brakes are all done. If you want to come in and take a look, we've got on this side, sweetheart. Um, we're going to, we've got a new uh, brake master, or master cylinder coming, but all the brake lines are run. So when we get it, we just change the master cylinder and put all new brakes on, all new lines on it. All new flex lines, all new pads, new rotor, our new uh, uh, what the caliper put in the front. We have all new wheel cylinders in the back, all new brake shoes. You can see where they're all brake lines are all tied down, all nice and neat and tidy. Did a beautiful job on that. Uh, the brake system has all been taken apart and welded up. You can see we, he mounted a um, 
a grease fitting here so we can grease that up at any time um, to be just a little more professional than normal uh, that, could, that won't seize up we are on to yeah we're, we're cooking with gas so we're radiator gas tank motor transmission brake pedal we've got a i think a gas pedal come from a man in texas that's awesome that's absolutely awesome said it was brand new sitting on his bench and he's going to send it to us wow thank you very much we appreciate it um ba -ba -ba -ba. i want to thank everybody for buying the gear i want to thank my queen jolene for doing a, such a fantastic job every day and keeping me in place i want to thank everybody for coming back and watching because it allows me to do what i love to do and that's hard to believe work <laughs> I, I i do i just kind of i don't know what to say i, I mean we barely even go out and run the cars at all. I'm, I'm, I'm in the shop all the time, working and thinking about what I'm doing. And I don't hate to say it, but I enjoy to work and make things. Um, if you've not been here before, um, this chassis was destined for the boneyard if it wasn't for uh, my dream. And um, we've made it from nothing, no plans, no nothing. Just went for it, just started building it. Um, I had an idea what I wanted to do. But I can guarantee you, I didn't know that piece of pipe was going there. I did not know that was going there. It all worked out as I went for it. So um, you can do the exact same thing. Just start somewhere and every day just make a plan what you're going to do next. If I had to build this again, I don't think it would be the exact same way. I'd, I'd feel like it would be totally different again because I would not have kept everything in my brain that I have done here uh, to do it again. I kind of just, I build it on the fly and um, that's the way I do it. So when I make mistakes, I just fix it. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. And as, as human beings, we all know that everybody makes mistakes, unless you don't do nothing. <laughs> that's simple as that. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for coming back and watching. Uh, we got this side looking pretty good. Um, got this side looking pretty good. The bumper looks good. I think it's a great place for some bad Chad flexible chrome. Hopefully soon well, I get these doors put on and maybe get the grill put in. I can put, I can put the grill and get the doors put on. Uh, she's ready to let down off the jack stands and roll out. And then we'll get a visual of one side of it in, in bare metal. Uh, right now it's on jack stands. And we are... Well, with, without this mat here, we were 13 inches off the floor. There we go. We're 13 and a half inches off the floor. When we let it off the jack stands, we're going to be a measly eight inches off the ground. We're coming down five inches from that. It's going to be some low and squat and short. It's going to be the tone machine. It's going to be the tone machine. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Like, share, comment, come back, subscribe. See you tomorrow.